Okay, today we're talking about operations with radical expressions. So, we need to make sure you know what we have. So, the first thing we're going to talk about are like radicals. Like radicals have the same radicand. And if they're not like, then we call them unlike. And unlike radicals have different radicands. So here's some examples. Remember the radicand is what's underneath the radical symbol. So if these both have a 5, they have the same radicand, and so this is an example of like radicals. All right, this radicand is a 3, this radicand is a 2. Those are different radicands. So they are unlike radicals. Now, the important thing to remember is that combining radicals follows the properties of real numbers. That is, only radicals with like radicands can be combined, similar to combining like terms. So just to refresh your memory about the like terms, if you have 3a plus 7a, then we know that those are like terms, so they can be combined to give us 10a. However, if I had 4a minus 2b, the a and the b are unlike terms, and they cannot be combined, and that would be as simplified as you can get. So we're just carrying that process forward and instead of using the letters or variables, we're actually just talking about radicals and the radicand, which is the number under the radical. So look at the examples that we have. What is the simplified form of each expression? Okay, I look at my radicands. I have a 2. I have a 2. They're exactly the same. So 7 square roots of 2 minus 8 square roots of 2. It is like saying 7 apples minus 8 apples. And you're left with negative 1 apple or negative 1 square roots of 2. We don't write the 1, it's understood. Alright, then we have 5 square roots of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5. So again, we look at our radicand. I have a 5 and a 5. Those are the same. So I'm going to combine the numbers on the outside. 5 plus 2 is 7 square roots of 5. Now, we have something a little different down here. Oops. <sighs> little technical difficulties there. Moving it up so we can work. What is the simplified form of each expression in parts A and B? I have 4 square roots of 7 plus 2 square roots of 28. And at first glance, those do not have like radicands. So we might think that we can't do anything with them. However, this one has a factor that's a perfect square. So it's going to become 4 square roots of 7 plus 2. And 28 is 4 times 7. So that gives me 4 square roots of 7 plus 2. That's my perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2 square roots of 7, leaving me with 4 square roots of 7 plus 4 square roots of 7. And what does that give me? 4 plus 4 is 8, so I have 8 square roots of 7. Okay? Now, when you see that, if you know that 1's not a perfect square, then that would be the number to try to see if it goes into it. As we found out, 7 goes into 28 four times. Not always so easy if there are factors that both have a perfect square in them, or, or neither one of them is not a perfect square. So look at this example. 5 square roots of 32. Again, looking for the largest perfect square that goes into it, 16 times 2 minus 4 largest perfect square of 18 would be 9 
times 2. So again, both of these are perfect squares. So when I bring them out, I have 5 times the square root of 16, which is 4, leaving me with the square root of 2, minus 4 times the square root of 9 is 3 square roots of 2. So if you do look back, you can see the 5 goes with the 5, square root of 16 is 4. 2 doesn't have a perfect square, so it stays under my radical. Carried my 4 down, square root of 9 is 3. 2 is not a perfect square, it stays under the radical. So I simplify, I have 20 square roots of 2 minus 12 square roots of 2. Now my radicands are exactly the same, so I'm going to think 20 minus 12, which is 8 square roots of 2. Alright, look on the next side. What do you notice that's different? Hopefully you notice that we are now dealing with multiplication in our problems. Some of my students pointed out that we have parentheses in there and that parentheses deals with multiplication and should help us remember that now we're going to have to distribute when we work through these problems. So first off, square root of 2 times the quantity of the square root of 6 plus 5. Okay, that's the distributive property or what we've often called the salt shaker that we have to do. So we have to multiply the square root of 2 times the square root of 6 and the square root of 2 times 5. So just like I said before, I wouldn't multiply them out. I'd go ahead and try to break up, break up that 6. So that's, that's my 2 and my 6 is 2 times 3. Alright, square root of 2 times 5. 5 is not underneath the radical, so it stays outside, but the 2 is, so it stays inside. Alright, and before we've had perfect squares, but this is just like having a perfect square. When you have two of the same thing, you get to bring one out. And that leaves us with two square roots of 3 plus 5 square roots of 2. My radicands are not the same, so I am finished with that problem. Okay, look at this next one. Hopefully it should bring to mind a pattern that we've talked about a lot this year, A minus B quantity squared. And remind you that when you see that, you square the first term, you keep the sign the same, you multiply the product of the terms by 2, and then you square the last term. So we're going to apply that pattern to this problem. Okay? So that means this is like this is my A and this is my B. So I'm going to square the first term minus 2 times the product of the A and B plus squaring the last term. My first term is the square root of 11 and my last term is 2. <clears throat> Sometimes that's easy to follow me. I highlighted it. My square root of 11 is here. And so that comes here and here. Just like my A is here and here. And then my second term is B. And this is where it goes in my pattern. So in our particular problem, B is 2. So you can see that where we had B, we actually filled in 2. Kind of helps you follow the pattern. Okay, again, we're using what we talked about on the other day, whenever you have, or excuse me, on the page before, uh, square root of X quantity squared is equal to, doesn't matter if that square is on the inside or the outside, it's equal to X. So, the square root of 11 squared is 11. Uh, this 2 is not under radical, so these 2, this is 2 times 2, square roots of 11, and then 2 squared is 4. So then I have like terms, and 11, 11 plus 4 is 15 minus 4 square roots of 11.
Okay. Now the last one, I want to make, I need to make this a little bit smaller, get out of my way. The last one we have is um, our kitty cat, but he wasn't supposed to be in there. Anyway, we have a binomial times a binomial. So hopefully that should bring to mind foil. Okay. Actually, I'm going to write that in the different colors so you can follow it. Let's go with foil, F, O, I, L. And hopefully you remember that F foil stands for first. So that means fours on the outside. The six, I'm going to break it up with a three. So that's two times three. There's my six times three. Uh, my outside terms, that would be these two. So that is plus three is on the outside. I have a six and a six underneath. And then I have inside terms, which is minus eight with a three and a three inside. And then I have the last terms which is going to be minus 6 with 3. That's the 3 here. And then I'm going to break up that 6 again to 3 times 2. So you can see everything that was inside is inside. I just wrote it a little differently to help us see how to write our square roots. So when I bring that together, I'm going to have this is going to come out as a perfect square. This comes out as a perfect square. There's a perfect square. And there's a perfect square because that's two of them. So that gives me four times three with the two left underneath plus three times six minus eight times three minus six times three and the two stays underneath. So, I am back to, let's go back to this so you can see better. 4 times 3 is 12 square roots of 2, plus 18, minus 24, minus 18 square roots of 2. Hopefully you recognize we're not done because we have two like radicands. Those can be combined and two constants. They're all constants, actually. Um, and so 12 square roots of 2 minus 18 square roots of 2 is negative 6 square roots of 2. 18 minus 24 is negative 6. And we have simplified it as far as possible. All right, the last thing that we have to talk about is something that you have seen a lot before, but you've never had the name for it. So today we're going to talk about the name. The name is conjugates. The conjugates are the sum and difference of the same two terms. For example, you have seen a, excuse me, the sum is a plus b. The difference is a minus b. Well, if we take those two terms and we multiply them together, we get a squared minus b squared. We've done that a lot in the last chapter. Well, what we just showed mathematically, this is how we write it in English, is that the conjugates of, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not the word conjugates. I'm supposed to say the product, that's what we did, the product of conjugates is a difference of squares. Okay, the product, because we multiplied, of conjugates, these two are conjugates, is, there's my is, the difference, because I'm subtracting, of squares, because both of them are squares. Okay, and lastly, conjugates, 
The reason this is so important is because they are used to simplify a quotient, remember the diff, uh, answer to a division problem, they are used to simplify a quotient whose denominator is a sum of difference of radicals. Okay, so we have a problem here. Negative 3 over the square root of 10 plus the square root of 5. Okay, I have a sum or difference. Of course, it's a sum in the denominator that has radicals. So I have to multiply by the conjugate, which says you write exactly what you see, but you change the sign to the opposite. Then whatever you do to the top, or excuse me, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. So, we're going to multiply these. You do need to think about the distributive property when you do this, or our salt shaker. So, we have negative 3 square roots of 10 plus, because it's a negative times a negative, 3 square roots of 5, all over 10 it's the square root of 10 squared minus the square root of 5 squared. Well, it's always going to be like that, okay? So that means the next step will be negative 3 square roots of 10 plus 3 square roots of 5, okay? There's that concept we keep running into. What is the square root of x? squared, it's the same as the square root of x squared, which is x. So, the square root of 10 squared is 10, minus the square root of 5 squared is 5. And when we simplify, our top can't be simplified any further, but our bottom, uh, let's write that top again, negative 3 square roots of 10, plus 3 square roots of 5, all over 5. And we have finished talking about operations with radical expressions.